Howdy y'all. Welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. This video will start about a four, maybe five video series of me building my six and a half Creedmoor. I wanted to take you all along in this journey because I didn't really feel like there were a ton of good videos that showed you how exactly to assemble an AR here. And so I'm gonna try and break this up into a few different segments and each video I'm gonna talk about the parts that you're gonna need for that specific video and I'm gonna talk about the tools you will need as well. As far as price goes, I've made a couple budget builds in the past and I really wanted to go with something that I was gonna enjoy and that I was going to like. And I was gonna put a little bit more money into this one while still trying to get these items at a sale price or on some sort of discount. And as most of y'all know, the times right now, it's hard to find ammo it's hard to find gun parts, so this may take a little bit to build up everything I need to build this gun. And so I will also flash the prices up on the screen. And then at the very end of this series, I will go through the parts list and all the prices for everything I purchased here. My goal is to keep this under about $2,000. And so I've built a couple and I've kept them right around the thousand dollar range and that's not including optics and stuff. But this one I really wanted to kind of cater to what I was looking for. And so I wanted to put a little bit more money into it and build a nice gun. So before we dive into this, I am no gunsmith. This is probably my third, maybe fourth gun to build here. So I still recommend after you build the gun, bring it to a gunsmith, get the headspace checked, and just have them look it over. My first gun I brought to a gunsmith, they checked it out. They even replaced the spring because it was a little too stiff in the gun, and it was denting the round as I tried to pull back to eject the next round. And so I was not going to mess with that, and I brought it to a gunsmith. It cost me, I think, 40 bucks to headspace it and then they charged me another 40 or so for the spring and I think 20 to take a couple shots through it and, and try and figure out what was going on. So for a hundred bucks I had the comfort that it was going to shoot well and I wasn't going to have any issues with it. The last thing before we get into this, if you're building a gun, especially if you're building your first one, you can go to some of these forums and post pictures and do that. But what I've noticed is people will tear you apart for your builds. So if you're willing to get torn apart, go for it. But at the end of the day, it's your build and you're building the gun that you want. So who cares what somebody else thinks? Who cares what colors you put on it? Who cares what parts you use for it? As long as you're building what you want, then I say just go for it. In this video, I am going to start with the lower parts kit. And I have a lower receiver here. It's an Aero Precision lower receiver, the M5. I did get the Texas edition as that was something that I wanted on this gun. And I went ahead and color filled some of the items and I'll post a link to the video where I show how I color filled this as well. I'll put one in the description and then I'll post it up there at the top of the screen as well. I really like the Aero Precision uppers and lowers. That's honestly all I've used on my builds. It's a little heavier than maybe a more expensive one, but for this price, it's not that bad. And I always buy the blemish. My first one I did not because I was worried what the blemish would look like, but typically you cannot find a blemish. And I found one or two small blemishes on this one, and I'll show some close-ups of that. But really, they're so minor. And if it's your first gun and your first build, you're probably gonna end up putting a few scratches in it in yourself as you build it. Or, you know, as you shoot it and stuff, you're gonna scratch it up a little bit too. So a blemish here or there is worth saving $30, $40 per receiver. So for this lower, I paid about $135, I believe. And I wanna say it was probably in the 150, 160 range if I did not get the blemish. If you don't want a Texas edition or you don't want the engravings on it, you can get it for probably about 20, 30 bucks cheaper as well. So that's one way you can save money during this build but this is something that I wanted, so that's what I went for. So for the magazine catch, I bought the Strike Industries, and you'll notice a theme as I'm going through this build. Everything I'm 
buying for the little parts and pieces will be this red color. So you'll notice that throughout this video, I really wanted kind of that black and red look. And so most of my parts will be red. For the Strike Industries Magazine Catch, everything you need comes in this package. And this cost me $20. One thing to note is if you are trying to save money, you can just go buy the Aero Precision Lower Parts Kit and that will save you quite a bit of money. But like I said, I wanna go with some parts and pieces to make the build more unique to me, as in going with the red look here and things like that. So for that reason, I bought everything separately. When you buy the parts kit, it's actually kinda of nice because literally everything you need typically comes in there. You don't have to worry about making sure you have all your little springs or roll pins or anything like that. The next thing we will install today is the bolt catch. I couldn't find the AR-10 bolt catch in red that I liked, so I am just going with the basic Aero Precision black bolt catch here. This was $15. I believe I bought it on Aero Precision's website. And as I'm giving you these prices, this is the price with shipping and handling as well as tax, so it is my out the door price. So you may see it on their website cheaper, but I may have had to pay shipping and tax on top of it. And by the way, while you're buying these, if you do have to pay shipping, buying more things at one time will help make it a little bit cheaper. The other thing I'm gonna need for this video is this little spring replacement kit. So this has what I need for the bolt catch. It'll have the bolt catch spring and the bolt catch plunger. And there's some other parts in here that I may need throughout the build. But if not, it also has some spare parts that if I lose anything, because some of these pieces are very small, that I have some extra spare parts here. And that spring kit was $10. So as far as tools for this video, there's really not much you're going to need. I have a 1 16th inch Allen wrench here and then some thread locker. So all that being said, let's go ahead and dive into putting the magazine catch and the bolt catch in your lower receiver. We're gonna start with the Strike Industries magazine catch. So in this bag you have the magazine catch spring, the button, and the magazine catch. So we'll go ahead and get started. You will want to start by entering your magazine catch into that spot there. Then you'll flip it over and you will insert your spring. And then for the button, you want the textured side on the outside. So you'll go ahead and push down on that. And then you'll want to turn this just a few turns to start just so you can get it started. So you can see that we've gone ahead and started that. And you can take a pen or a pencil or something. And in this situation, I like to push on this side and then you'll spin this side. You don't necessarily need a pen or pencil, but that may help. So I'll push it and then you'll just spin until that tightens up a little bit. So what you're looking for here too is when you push this button, that right here has plenty of clearance. So as soon as you push it, that's what's gonna release your magazine there. So you don't have to push really hard to be able to get that to clear. You just want it to be able to clear as you're pushing it. And if you have a magazine already, you can go ahead and test that out if you want by sticking a magazine in there and making sure that it releases it. That's how you install your magazine catch. What you need for your bolt release is your actual bolt release. And then I am going to pull the bolt catch spring and plunger out of this little kit. So you have your bolt catch, your bolt catch plunger, and your bolt catch spring. You're also gonna need your 1 Allen wrench and your thread locker. On these Aero Precisions, they come with a threaded bolt here as well where your bolt catch will go so you need to go ahead and take that off and that's where you'll use your 1 16th inch allen wrench 
All right, so those are the four pieces you will need to install your bolt release. So I'm gonna start by taking this pin that we just pulled out. I'm gonna put a little thread locker on there right now. Not a lot, just a tad so that it'll stay in there. All right. And so set that down real quick. So what you're gonna do is take your plunger and your spring and you'll go ahead and put the spring on the plunger. And then you see this hole right there. You'll put your spring and plunger in that hole like that. And then you will take your bolt release here and this goes on top and you'll push that down and I'll show you here. There's a hole right there that that threaded piece will go into that we just put thread locker on. So you'll put that in and then you'll push down here like that. And you wanna go ahead and take this piece that you just put some thread locker in and you'll just wanna screw that in. We'll just tighten that down. until it's flush, it should stop. I'm not gonna tighten it too hard there. The thread locker should do the job. Then you can see that it operates as it's supposed to. Thanks for watching this week's video. On next week's video, we will install the fire control group, the pivot pin, the grip takedown pin and safety, in the buffer assembly. Thanks for watching and see y'all next week.